anyway, uh, thank you for coming down. Uh, I uh, it's uh, always this is a new adventure for me. This uh, online stuff. So um, if I make a mistake or something, well, let me know. One thing I should be concerned about is when I advance and go to the next slide, I should, if I continue to start talking too early, you'll miss it because you don't have the slide. It takes a while. So if I start at too big of a speed, uh, tell me that. I'm talking for the, the appropriate slide is on the screen. Let me know. Okay. My uh, part of my thinking here in doing this is I don't like staging under the layout where it's dark and you can't get to the trains. I remember seeing a fellow at uh, Tony Custer's during an operating session on the floor with a flashlight trying to see the ac access to his uh, staging. And uh, I think that's, that, there are a lot of options other than that. So I uh, grew up in, a lot in Kansas City there was a guy out there, Bob Willer, he's with us today. He said, you can't have too much staging. And I must admit, we we all said, we all giggled a little bit when he said that. But today he's got, a, I think, 250 cars in staging and probably room for another 250 cars. And he says, you know, I do have more staging than I really need. But uh, if he's... Uh, happy with that, that I'm happy with them for them. So anyway, so I'm going to talk about some alternatives to staging here. The prototype, when they need to stage a car or get it out of service, you know, they hear some tank cars that obviously shippers need in, in uh, Mason City. And they the railroad probably charges a few dollars a car for each day that they're there. And some of them even go further. They say, if you need your cars, we'll take them, we'll inspect them, lubricate them, whatever has to be done, and let them go. But, uh, and in the Midwest, you see a lot of branch lines that have been uh, really out of service. Well, they're used today to store cars. That's the prototype staging. Jack Ozanich had a very good uh, staging yard, called Fiddle Yard, as it's called. Um, here's a picture of Craig Wilson actually assembling trains during a session. This, the track was a big loop. The passenger train that you see there is, say, going east and or west, I forget which, and uh, could make a complete loop, go out this way, and then come back in on this other end. But uh, and but he could be dropping cars, picking up cars, and so forth. So this this is a very nice way. The car, all of the cars are not all in sight. A lot of them are in uh, the um, drawers underneath. These are look like typically passenger cars. The ones behind the glass are strictly for display. More traditional staging is in the layout itself. Bob Rodriguez uh, has some very nice, he's got, it's well lighted. You can see the train. You could reach in there and get a derailed, a reset derailed car, so forth. That's really good staging. He has more staging here on the other side. This is the train leaving. Re Bob's uh, staging area, and it's under control of the, um, of the uh, dispatcher. Here, um, he, he, he's got a signal, so he gets a green signal when it's okay to leave, and he, uh, the dispatcher also controls the power of the track. So it's really tightly controlled by the dispatcher until the train gets really has the right to go. Here's the dispatcher's Here's how he knows what train is wants to go where. Here's another picture of Bob Rodriguez's uh, staging, his west staging. This I would not like as much because it's a little hard to leave, to, to, to run. He has to derailment, it's a little hard for him to get out. But if he, he does have one train that never has to turn, 
is a passenger train push pull with a, uh, a diesel on one end and a control car on the other. So when it comes in, it's over in the far track. All he has to do is turn, reverse it and turn when he wants to leave. So that's quite efficient. And with this sort of staging would be very effective. Matt Thompson lives here in uh, Virginia. He at one time had staging around the corner here and you couldn't see it. You couldn't, the train would come in, drop some cars and go back out if the fellow picked the right track, the right engine and so forth. It was always a problem for a visiting fireman um, or perhaps visiting engineers are better taught. Um, here, what he did was he just pulled the trains and parked them here. So that's his staging yard. So it's in full sight. Anytime the crew from the yard that's behind the picture here needs, needs some cars, he goes in, picks them up, Leak gives them cars here that he wants to go. They're the three uh, um, yards and big yards in Portland, Vermont, Portland, Portland, uh, Maine, Portland, Washington, I'll get it right. And uh, that uh, has UP, NP, and uh, another one here. So, and these are, this is those overflow cars. Whoops. And uh, as it's all lined up, the car, when the uh, crews are working the cars, they know what they're getting and they'll, and they know what they gave them back. So he keeps track of all that. Now here's the ideal. You can't get in any trouble with this staging. This is West East, yeah, West staging on this side, a little bit of a fence here. And then over here is a, a aisle for the operators for this, for the freight yard uh, work. And this is the controls for this uh, siding up here. This is Pete LaGuardia in, uh, in Virginia. Um, you, yeah, I find it interesting. As a working this yard, you never talk to these guys over here. I mean, you're, you've got your work to do, they've got their work to get. So the two of them, while they're completely visible, you can see them. It's, we're, to me, that's almost the perfect staging situation. And what I should point out that this track really, when this train leaves, it will come over here. It's a loop behind me. So this is the end of the river. His other staging, the east end, is back in here to an off room, off site room. Joan Armstrong probably designed more staging than anybody. Uh, and probably most of it was hidden. I should say this is a, his office where he designed a lot of railroads. This um, is an electric razor. So he could change his mind quite a bit when he was designing a, uh, uh, designing a layout. His um, staging is his workbench. His staging was up here that I'm going to describe. This reverted loop. What he would do is a tr train would go back in here, go in here, and turn. He would come back down this around this loop here, park in one of these tracks, and be ready to go. Now the dis it, the problem here was that it was hidden, but if you you wouldn't have to be hidden. And then when he wants to leave, he's ready to go. Called reverted sta loop staging. Andy Dodge had a very well, he had this track that just kind of lowered slightly and went down the hill. And you hardly noticed it. I walked by there one time and he's talked about staging and I never even noticed it. This being a branch line track continued on. This is a siding. Here's that branch line and siding again. The staging track is behind here. You'd never know it was there and just went around the corner there to a big loop. 
Chuck Hitchcock, he, um, he was living in assisted living. He, he tore down his big Santa Fe Railroad in Kansas City. He thought it was a good idea. He said, I'm at an age where I probably need to be ready to fold things up. And uh, just his wife, after a while, said, I, I would like to live in a real house. So maybe we could find a place to rent, which they did. And so he created his, what he calls the Ottawa uh, Railroad. And this is one of the, here's the track, it's the Ottawa Junction Railroad. Here is his staging here. Very, open, very much in the open, easy work. Yes, this is his, the state collaborates, the Ottawa Yard goes back and forth to get his cars with cars to get, that are outbound and cars that are inbound. And then he has a branch line train that goes here to Burlington and a second one that goes over to Lawrence. Here's just working the Ottawa City Yard. And here's the staging. More simple staging I couldn't find. This is, these are main line tracks no train ever runs on them, but it strictly represents the outside world for Doug, for uh, uh, for his layout. Here's a layout that I designed as a part of a contest for Model Railroad. Did not win a prize. They, uh, they, I thought it was really a perfect. Wouldn't you like to have a bedroom that was essentially 12 by 12? And uh, here, the door that went in, and here is a closet. I don't think no builder would ever build a house like that, but boy, it's perfect for a mall railroad. Um, the thing I wanted to point out here was that I've used a, what I call a sector plate here. This is a track, piece of track on wood that will swing. Here's a pivot point and we'll go to any line up here. So what it does is eliminates the switches. Otherwise, here with five tracks, the main plus the four staging tracks, you would have to uh, fill up, you'd have to, this would all be uh, sidings, and you wouldn't have any place to back up the train to get in. Close up here. So sector play, here is what moves, and it will line up with any of these four staging tracks here. And this is the exit right here. Here's a this is a staging uh, or sector plates are really a British thing. I don't think there are many used in the United States. Here's here it is pivot point back here. Any one of these trains can line up with one of these. And the British uh, British exhibitions are just that for, for layouts. They don't have typically, I think maybe it's changed recently, but they don't have a lot of vendors. They have mostly uh, uh, layouts and they're very selective about who gets in. There is no trash, no uh, third rail, stuff, no, no uh, fancy stuff in there that, that we turn our nose up to. So sector plate, Here's the train leaving. This is a diagram out of a British magazine. Here he's backing out. This will be swung over and go out this way. So he comes back here. You can line this up, go back. They have a second engine here that will pull the train. This fellow then could get another train. He could do some switching. This fellow could come out with his own cars, whatever. In other words, it'd be kind of a nonstop thing if you wanted to. But sector plates could have things like this, a little cradle in there, which you could not just pick up an engine and turn it. It's at least in a cradle so you can turn it. Another thing that the British did, where they have cassettes with track on it. And a very smooth surface here. And they 
aluminum he's together. This looks like a caboose. Here he's taking an engine and sticks up for the next train out to this exhibition line. You see, there's not much room out here, so he can't. He didn't have room for much of a staging area, so so they condense them as much as they can. Traverser, I think I can think of one traverser in this country, and uh, th this just goes back and forth. I, I think there's one that's about 12 feet long out in Colorado, one or uh, California, I think, Phil has it. Um, this I don't know whether it's N or H O, but they just turn the trains around and line them up with the one they want. So those are some examples of what the Brits are doing. My buttons are so sensitive here. Okay, back in the US, where maybe we're not worried about running five trains over a five, eight hour period. Maybe we have a train that comes in and we start switching it and maybe it takes a couple hours. Here I have uh, staging, separate staging, but sometimes I just bring the train in ahead of time because getting the trains out of staging is congested and you might as well just start here. Say the train has been brought in, the, the uh, crew outlawed and you get a new crew and you can start operating. And uh, no, he can be in there for a couple hours operating in this case. And he could go to, he could be re set ready to go and you could leave it there. You would not have to take it back to stay. Another approach I have on the layout is this, I have a float barge. It's, it's uh, based on a uh, Western Maryland barge. It will hold eight cars, so it's not very big. And, but that keeps me busy for quite a while in this area. Um, so, and then I also have this, also, I'll have a B&O train that comes in here, and I just leave this in place. I don't lift the barge and take it to another hole in the wall. I just, if I want to replace something on a barge, I just, uh, uh, I can swap the cars, not swap the barge. Another barge, Matt Thompson has a dozen cars here, and it's really enough to uh, really keep things going for a while, quite a while. Very compact um, staging. Alan McClellan, he uh, had a layout, I think you probably were used to reading about it in Craftsman Magazine way back when, and then he, moved to a new house with a nice, which a much bigger, much nicer basement. And he got to start a building, a second one. So I'll show you his uh, thing. Now, this is what I call super stage. It's a big lab. You got, you, you probably don't want all your cars. He, he stores his car empty um, hopper trains that don't really, need to be restaged. It has four outputs, four outlets, the branch lines and the main line here. He has one outlet that's very, really, very big. And I think the only reason he does it is that somebody can lean in from the outside, you lean in from the staging and you can talk. Now, obviously, if you're on a phone or something like that, you'd say, well, who are you again, and so forth. So you might have a bit of an issue. So this makes it a little easier to have face-to-face -face conversation from staging to uh, somebody out in the running trains. And one final shot. He got the, the railroad pretty well along, pretty well operating. Probably this picture was taken in the following week. He was, he tore down and he went into assisted living. Ken Jenkins has a beautiful railroad. He has these wonderful uh, you know, green elevators that he's built. He operates an area called, what he calls, refers to it as the Kess City Shortcut sometimes. Yeah. And it starts the first part of it is in Manhattan. 
and ends up in Belleville. Actually, it's a loop of track around his basement. So the trains are leaving Belleville initially ended up right back in Manhattan. What he did was he created a, um, a view block here or a staging area behind the side, side panel, pulled in trains here. And he was kind of a, he made, made a mistake. He built beautiful buildings, he built a beautiful layout. As he said, I didn't ever really think about the operation and all the details that it got into. Because, and of course, when a train, westbound train here, here, the next thing was an eastbound. See, he went around here. He's, and this is what he, what you'd run into. This is the eastern end of his railroad. So the solution to the problem was this. He, this is the area, Belleville area, came on out down in here. These are where westbound trains ended up or, or left from. Here's it. This train is going east, leaving this new station. It's now been, uh, I understand, ballasted and cinders and everything's been put in there. So it kind of blends in with the rest of the railroad. Here's a westbound train that ultimately will run around the perimeter of the basement, come back here into Bellevue and leave Bellevue and come back into the staging. His problem is solved. My staging, I go back many, many years on it. I think I built this in probably 1980 or something. And uh, it's a simple enough, had four or five tracks in here, stub in and loop and went around. So a train could come in, go right back out, for instance, didn't do that. but pick up different cars and leave, whatever. Passenger trains, at first I didn't have any really way of handling it, but I did build this. And I put it, a passenger train could sit in here, I could have a switcher working it, revise the conflict concept, and he went back around and could back on layout. Um, Today, that's used as an engine storage area for uh, the uh, for the boss, for the Baltimore layout that I have, and this is probably the best, neatest. As I say, first this deserves first place in uh, staging, in terms of beauty. Lee Nicholas in Utah. He now, he, in all fairness, he started out. He built his first layout. Didn't have any staging. He said, well, I got to have some. So he designed something. He had to crawl under the layout and uh, get up in this narrow aisle. And it seemed to work for him, but he referred to it as the mole. That was it. And um, so. This is the other side of the room. This fellow's putting a freight train together. He may very well, Lee is so organized that he stays just ahead of time, uh, has somebody, he has the job of putting trains together for his next uh, setup. So some final thoughts. I think it should be accessible. I think I've showed several examples of that, not relegated to some dark place under the railroad. If it's out in the, part of a yard or something, ballast it like everything else. And uh, it'll blend right in. And if you don't use the uh, equipment, if you're if it's just there, don't store it there, store it in a shelf or in a cabinet or in the box, original boxes. But I think you'll, you don't need to take up room with staging. It can be used for operation. So that's kind of my story about staging. Why don't you turn on the microphones in case.